All right, and the second and uh, last presentation of this session is titled Standard Lattice-Based Key Encapsulation on Embedded Devices. Uh, the authors of the paper are James Howe, Tobias Soder, Marcus Cross, and Tim Gunesu, and uh, James is gonna give you the presentation. Okay, Th uh, thank you for the, the introduction. Um, so yeah, uh, we have some results here for the uh, NIST candidate Frodo on, um, in hardware and software, so I'm just here to present the, the, the research here. So I'm sure you've heard a lot today already about, um, about post-quantum crypto and learning with errors, so I'm going to just skip the introduction there and just go straight into the motivation while we looked at Frodo. Um, and then I'll, I'll describe the, the microcontroller designs, the, um, the hardware designs, and then give you some results and comparison and performance analysis. So why have we, um, why have we decided to do this? Basically, uh, NIST, as you know, have started a post-quantum standardization uh, competition. Um, and they have suggested that in the future this will likely involve um, evaluations on constrained devices such as smart cards and also comparisons of schemes in hardware. And the reason we focus on Frodo is mainly because um, as, a, as practitioners this uh, is, is a fairly appealing uh, scheme to concentrate on. It's extremely versatile and really strong, um, has really strong security properties. And um, yeah, it's probably the most secure uh, lattice based candidate. And also, there have been less implementations of standard lattice based schemes. Um, you can even see in this conference here all of the, all of the implementations have focused on ideal lattice candidates or modular lattice candidates. And so, we're looking at trying to sort of uh, bridge the gap, uh, I mean, shorten the gap between. Um, what you expect from standard lattices in theory and in practice. And also we consider Frodo an ideal candidate for long-term security use cases, um, especially constrained hardware platforms. So Frodo um, was designed really to be a conservative yet practical post-quantum candidate. Uh, its security is derived from the straightforward standard learning with errors problem. And um, another appealing property is the fact that parameter, uh, parameter selection is a lot more simplified um, for Frodo because it is uh, connected to the learning with errors problem. There's no restrictions on the, the size of the, 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 the format of the prime or, the, or any other sort of parameters. And uh, practitioners, this is, um, this, is also, this is obviously very appealing. Um, I, uh, for future IoT, um, this can be appealing, um, and also having a long-term and efficient crypto scheme is, is a good thing. Um, as we've seen before in the last talk, uh, the microcontrollers, especially the, the M4, um, will probably be, uh, play a, a big role in IoT, um, in the IoT era, and also um, FPGAs will, will be um, part of that feature as well. They're already being used in the likes of um, cloud services such as uh, Microsoft. And um, a suitable use case for this uh, research would be something like satellite communications where you need long-term and um, highly secure um, cryptography. So here's just a, a shortened version of the, the encapsulation module. Um, the, the main uh, operations within the Frodo and within the encapsulation scheme are essentially in line six and line eight. So this is where we do the learning with errors calculation. This essentially consists of a matrix matrix uh, multiplication with some addition of uh, an error distribution. But also we have um, pseudo random number generation uh, in the first few lines as well as um, generating these matrices um, from the error distribution. And then we also have, um, in line nine there, we have uh, the use of a random oracle uh, to ensure that we have CCA security. So this takes in the ciphertext and the keys that we want to, uh, to send um, and creates a hash of it. 
So essentially, the key modules within Frodo, within key generation, encapsulation, and decapsulation, are matrix matrix multiplication up to size 976, uniform and Gaussian error generation, and uh, using random oracles. Um, so the, the proposed way to do this in the specifications is VSC shake. Um, but the, probably the biggest design challenge for us um, for this research was balancing uh, memory utilization and not deteriorating in the performance um, of, the, of the modules. And we didn't want to overexert the limited uh, computing capabilities of the embedded devices. Essentially, we wanted to still have some room to do other things on the devices. Essentially, we sort of knew that you're not just having this device to do encapsulation, you, you maybe want to do some other operations on it as well. So also, Frodo comes in two sizes. There's, the, uh, there's two parameter sets, so it targets uh, 128 and 192 bit security. Uh, it uses uh, pseudo randomness from either AES or C shake. And we focus on the key encapsulation mechanism rather than the, the, uh, the key exchange scheme proposed at CCS. So all of the designs we propose here uh, cover all of these, um, all of these, all of these uh, different parameter sets and different uh, uh, pseudo randomness. So the ARM implementation, um, probably the biggest contribution here is the, the, the optimized uh, memory allocation. So this enables us to actually fit the, fit the schemes on the, the embedded devices. Um, and uh, we also propose uh, an optimized assembly uh, multiplication routine, which speeds up the implementation. And also it helps us realize um, the performance for uh, certain use cases. Um, all, of the, um, all of the three uh, modules, they, um, they run in constant time to help us uh, protect against simple side channel analysis. And the total execution time of Frodo Chem for the 128-bit parameter set is 838 milliseconds running at 168 megahertz. So here's just a brief overview of the, the encapsulation. So you can see here, um, sort of in the middle, you have the multi uh, matrix multiplication and addition, uh, which stems from the, the samplers. And these are, these are outputs into the sort of the ciphertexts. And we had to analyze the memory occupancy during each operation. And wherever possible, we, we reused the, we used the, uh, the already allocated memory. And this saved us a lot of um, memory and, um, yeah. So here's uh, a, an overview of the, um, the cycle counts for the, uh, for, for the design. So the top half of the table here is our implementations with uh, both parameter sets and both AES and C-shake. Um, so as you can see here, there is a clear difference between the AES implementations and the C-shake implementations. Uh, this is essentially due to the fact that with AES, we get just enough randomness output each time that we can store them in registers. Um, for the C-shake um, outputs, we have actually too much. So we have to store them in RAM, and then we have to spend time um, saving and loading them from RAM. Uh, which is uh, which gives us the hit on the, the cycle counts. The the only other real uh, comparable scheme is the PQM4 implementation of uh, uh, Chem uh, using C Shake, and our uh, optimizations here show that we do save about two and a half million clock cycles, which is quite substantial. Um, but, also, but also compared to the um, ideal lattice and modular lattice-based schemes, there is a, a clear difference here, but I think that's to be expected. Uh, with the stack usage, uh, our memory optimizations save uh, significant amounts of, of bytes. So compared to the PQM4 implementation, we save between 30 and 40%. And versus the reference designs, we save 66%. Although the C-Shake implementation is, uh, is significantly slower, there is um, a slight savings there compared to the AES implementation. So for the FPGA uh, design, we propose a generic LWE multi 
multiplication uh, core, uh, which computes vector matrix multiplication and error addition. So you, uh, instead of doing matrix matrix, we do vector matrix and just repeat on the on the vectors of the of the, the left hand side uh, matrix. Uh, we also generate future randomness in parallel, which minimizes delays between the multiplications. This essentially makes the the, the bottleneck of the of the schemes in hardware the the multiplication. Um, and we have an on-the-fly memory management, which means that we're um, that the pre uh, the the next values are, are all ready for us to use, and um, this means we don't uh, use as much memory uh, as we need to. Uh, also, this this uh, design runs in constant time, um, and we do this by essentially making multiplication the the bottleneck. Uh, so that the, when we do generate randomness, it's done in parallel to this. And so the 128-bit Chem has a total execution of 60 milliseconds at 167 megahertz. So here's just a, an overview of the encapsulation design. Uh, as you can see there in the middle, we have the learning with errors multiplier. It takes uh, inputs uh, from uh, BRAM, which we use to store the key B, and we also store the the uh, the, the random uh, matrix A, and this is done on the fly um, from a C shake module. Um, and this also takes input from the the error uh, distribution, uh, the Gaussian block there I've put, and it uses a DSP slice here to do the to the the, the multiply and accumulate operations. Uh, then we simply just uh, add in the, an error um, for the, uh, at the end of the uh, vector matrix multiplication in order to form the learning with errors uh, calculation. And this is output as the ciphertext um, and then also input into the, the random oracle here at the end to, in order to calculate the shared secret. So here's just some results. Um, so the first half of the table here is, is our results for uh, both parameter sets for all three uh, modules. Also here we give uh, area consumption results of, um, of the modules we use, so C-Shake and the, the error sampler. Um, with regards to the area consumption, we do compete uh, with, um, with New Hope, so that's um, something quite comforting. Um, and um, but as you can see, it does suffer somewhat with the performance. So there's the clear distinction there with the operations per second. The only other real uh, comparable scheme here is uh, another standard learning with errors encryption implementation on in hardware, um, and we do significantly outperform them in terms of uh, in terms of BRAM. So. For this implementation, they don't really use, they don't really optimize the memory usage. And here, we, we even for um, even for the larger parameter sets, we do significantly outperform them, and we have an increase in uh, in um, in the frequency of the operations, although there is some uh, hit on the uh, on the throughput as well. So in conclusion, I think we, uh, we minimize the, the performance distance between standards and ideal lattice-based uh, chems. And I think um, we also show that Frodo, um, ideally, uh, I mean, the ideal platform for Frodo is, is hardware. I think um, it benefits a lot from having this parallelization and uh, the ability to like, um, pre-calculate your randomness in, in, for future use. Uh, the microcontroller implementations show a significant. Um, uh, we better the memory. Opt we better the the memory usage for uh, via memory optimizations, and we show a saving of between 66% against the references designs, and 40% versus the optimized designs. Um, it would be interesting to see if, uh, for future research, whether increasing the the amount of multipliers or the DSPs in the hardware design would how that would work, how that would benefit, how, that, how, we, how fast we could get the implementations, but also how much of a hit we would take on the area consumption. And also, we'd like to consider more um, side channel uh, protections, so uh, masking um, and, uh, and the likes. Um, but it would also be interesting to see how this compares to other NIST post-quantum candidates. There's not been 
as far as I know, there's not been many NIST candidates on FPGA, so we're not exactly sure how this compares to those. Um, all we have really is the sort of the pre-NIST uh, versions of the schemes. Um, so yeah, we wanted this. These results really were trying to help with the the the, the, uh, the standardization process. Uh, I think we've shown that Photochem is efficient, and um, we hope that we have made some contribution here. We're not obviously saying um, you can't use rings anymore unless you're Gollum. Thank you. Thank you, James, for the nice presentation. Uh, are there any questions? We have time for a couple of questions, maybe. I do have a question. You already commented on it. Uh, it well, you, your architecture only uses one multiplier. Yeah. Any insights on what's the expected performance improvement if you in, you know, introduce more multipliers? Um, in this case, with Frodo, right? That is. Yeah, uh, with, the, with the hardware design, you mean? Yeah, uh, well, the, the, this idea that because based on, it's based on matrices that can be highly yeah. parallelized. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did look at that, and um, with the increase in uh, multipliers, you, you, you therefore need twice as much randomness um, ready for you to use. So if you were going to increase the number of multipliers, you'd therefore need to have a better performing C-Shake or AES core. And when you increase the, um, the performance of C-Shake, it does like, get fairly big. So our designs there, you can see fit under 2,000 slices, where I think if you look at the high performance um, Reference implementation of Ketchek, it goes up to like 5,000 slices or something. So it's it's really really big. So I think if there was to be more work in this area, we'd have to look at the C Shake module and then optimize that somehow and make it more efficient. Okay, interesting. Any other questions? All right. If not, let's thank James again.